So once you understand the biomechanics, then can we predict the tooth move? That's the next question. So <clears throat> there's always a gap between theory and practice, okay? So there's a very large gap in between. Suppose all the, all the movement of the object on Earth is um, described by Newton's second law, which is very simple, like F equal MA. Can we predict everything? No way. Because there are friction. There are so many factors acting on it. So that even if the principle is very simple, but in a, to apply it in the daily, into the real world, there are so many gaps between theory and practice. Uh, it is true in human being too, as we are dealing with biology, human being. So biology object has so many variables. That means um, individual variation, right? So it is very difficult to predict, even if we exactly um, analyze the forces. Let's suppose balancing a sharp pencil here. Theoretically, we, we can balance it, but practically, it should be possible. So if the force is exactly applied at the center of mass here, if the uh, normal force is passing through the center of mass of the pencil, it's going to uh, balance perfectly. However, in practice or in a real life, that's not possible. That's the um, typical example of the gap between theory and practice. So how we can overcome this gap? Uh, theoretically, if the center of resistance is located somewhere here, um, one third of the distance of the root in three-dimensional model, and in two-dimensional model, it is located in um, two-fifth uh, two length of the root measured from the alveolar crest in two-dimensional model. And many experiments show, like many papers are published regarding the location of center of resistance. So it is not that difficult to locate the center of resistance. Theoretically. Let's take a look at the real world scenario here. Here we have a uh, badly uh, crowded tooth on the upper here. It's obviously it is an extraction case, right? So rather than extracting the bicuspid, you can see that the upper first molar is covered with resin temporary crown. That's because the first molar has a enamel displacement. So this, this tooth is to be replaced with um, prosthetic crown. So what I did was to um, excuse, I excused the prothodontist saying that I'd rather extract the first molar rather than the first spine. Mm -hmm. So what I did was, what I did was to extract the first spine instead of the uh, bicuspid. And as you can see, the, the passive lingual arch or transparallel arch was placed anteriorly and posteriorly and force was acting here. If we imagine that if we imagine that we take a lateral set of that patient, the hook here and there is located uh, like 10 millimeter above the bracket level, which is estimated location of the center resistance. So uh, theoretically or um, averagely, the center of resistance is located 10 millimeter uh, apically from the bracket. Well. It's not, it's not um, accurate because you can put the bracket gingivally or coronally, that will, make, that will give you a variation. And if you encounter a very long route, the center of resistance will be located way higher, right? So there are many variables, but here we have a case after the treatment, which has which, um, the, the uh, both anterior and posterior teeth has been translated into the extraction site. Um, if, what I want to say is that if I get this kind of result, is it because my expertise or is it because I was lucky? <laughs> if you get this kind of a result, not only me but you, even Dr. Burston can do this, but it's because he was lucky. As we, it's very difficult to balance the pencil over the flat air, flat plane, so there is always an error. As I said, locating the center resistance is very difficult because location is varied um, according to the individual variance. Okay, 
So if you get this kind of result or beautiful alignment after another vertical leveling, that's because you were lucky, not because you were very good at that. So what I did was something like this. There are many possibilities. Here we have an interior, uh, interior twist TPA here. It is located into parallel side, but it, to, to understand easily, I, I draw it on the labial side, OK? So consider it as the labial side. So I as, try to estimate as um, accurately by using a lateral set or CT or whatever tool you use. I try to locate it accurately. And then I, I, I estimate the center of location of center of resistance of its 10 millimeter. And if I apply the force here, then it is going to translate. But once again, if I get translation, it, is, it was because I was lucky. Because it was, the center of resistance was there in the line of action. But um, most of the cases, it does not happen in the real world. So instead of a single force, where there are some, some other options clinically to, to reduce the gap between theory and practice and what we want to do. One, one of the possibility is that uh, using, putting, putting series of hooks around the estimated center resistance because exact location is unknown. Instead of one hook, I put several hooks near the estimated center resistance, something like this. So once I start with a point at the center here, which is estimated location of center resistance, and a couple of months later, if you see that the crown is tipping into the extraction site, what you have to do is, wow, well, okay, center resistance was way above the line of action, so then I change the location of the elastic upwards so that you get closer to the center resistance. Meanwhile, if you have a root movement instead of tipping, that means force was applied above the center resistance. So in that case, I, I move the elastic downwards. Okay? So this is one of the possibility, one of the possibility to overcome this gap between theory and practice. Any other possibility? What you can do is using an equivalent force system instead of a single force. As you see in the, in the previous slide, uh, only one elastic was used. Elastic is typical appliance um, producing single forces, anteriorly and posteriorly. Okay, it cannot produce any moments as it is, what kind of support is this? It's hinge support, okay? Hinge support cannot produce any moment. So you don't have to know how to calculate it, but if we apply two forces, one here and the other here, uh, and I, make, I, I solder the hook way above the estimated location of center resistance instead of estimated location, okay? So if I estimate, if let's say, center resistance is located 10 millimeter above, what I do was what I do is to solder the hook way above, like three or four millimeters above the center resistance. Okay, and rather than applying single force here, I apply two forces so that we can translate. So after a couple of, I apply a little uh, lighter force here. Why is it lighter? Because this is, this is larger here. I will not uh, explain detail about it, but you can understand. You can. Uh, you can calculate the equivalent force system, okay? So if you, after a couple of months, if you find it tipping into the extraction site, what are you going to do? We can reduce the force here and or increase the force here so that we induce the root movement, okay? So if you find a root movement, you can uh, reduce the force here and or increase the force here. So that's how you cleverly you um, you use the equivalent force system to uh, to reduce the gap with the theory and practice, so that you can translate. So this method is the one that I used in previous cases. The, the hook was soldered way above the estimated center resistance, and I applied actually two elastics, not only one. If if I using a, only one elastic and get the translation. It's not because my, I have a good biomechanical knowledge, it's just because I was lucky. So rather than being lucky, this would be much safer, 
and much um, easier way to translate the teeth successfully. So this is where we learn the principle and apply it into daily practice. So you, know, you don't have to know how to calculate it, but it's fine. Um, many people ask me, um, Dr. Choi, do you calculate the force system in the the patient? Um, my answer is no, I never calculate. But I know where to where to put the where to put the single force. And I know where to increase the amount of moment or force, where to reduce the moment or the force. And you have to learn the knowledge how to increase or decrease so that you obtain the desired force system. You have to know how to cap you, you don't have to have an exact number. But anyway, if you're curious about the numbers, you can calculate. So here we have an actual value here, 77 gram here and 23 gram here. So then you have an equivalent force system exactly located 10 millimeter above the brackets here. 